I do a lot of stuff on my iPad and I don't necessarily, if I need to change something, there's most keyboards do not have an editor for the iPad to change the settings on the controller. Of course, most apps do have MIDI Learn, but if you're ever in an instance where you're out, Welcome to the Audio Dabbler YouTube channel. My name is Mitch, and in today's video, we're going to be taking a look at this Avatar EMK25. I think it's by like HX, HWX or HXW. I'll leave a link in the description to this. But for under 100 bucks, usually under 90, probably like 87. And, you know, if you can get a coupon, you get even cheaper. But it's a 25 key, small um, Bluetooth keyboard. I believe I have a. Uh, a ruler right here this is yes a 12 inch ruler right here and so you can see the size it's just a little bit bigger than that um 50 centimeters millimeters 60 i'm not for sure i got some different measurements on this thing but you can kind of see the size it's not real big as far as thickness goes um, not really going to focus but it's super nice, super lightweight. It is Bluetooth, which is nice. It is battery powered. So this brings me to kind of my first little complaint about it is because it takes three batteries. Really, I I use rechargeable batteries a lot and I really do not like things that take three because most chargers only charge in pairs. And so that really ties up like six batteries and it's because you you need to charge the batteries kind of in in unison and you know you need to keep the same batteries kind of on the same cycle level and you would just get better performance so things with three there's plenty of real estate here you could just added a fourth um i don't know could have got a little extra amp for a little extra battery life out of it um but yeah i just i just don't like threes like that so i i've used it and it does work and it do they do last for a, a good little while but I'm just powering it with a USB. I got it plugged into a little um, charging port off camera. But this thing has a lot of good features that I really like about it. And that's why I want to do a video on it. Nine pads on this side. You got eight knobs. You got two banks of pads. You can kind of see the light. I'm colorblind. And so there's, there is a difference. But there's not a huge difference to me. Um, everything is labeled pretty nicely. You got, uh, if you hit the ARP over here, then you've got all the different, um, if you have to hold it down and you can change and you can see the screen is very small, but it is got a lot of information. I'm going to zoom in here and you can see as I change, as I'm holding down, it's changing the ARP on or off. Um, you got a tap tempo. And you see as you tap, it'll show the tempo. Um, you have a note repeat that only works with the pads. Um, if you do the note repeat, um, you have octave up and down buttons. Let me zoom back out. You have octave up and down buttons on this side, which is, you know, good to expand out the keyboard. This little mod pitch bend wheel is like a joystick. It's, it's kind of fun. It takes a little while to get used to. I've not, whatever the classic, what, Roland that has the, or Korg that has that little wheel. Um, I've never used one really, so it's taken a little while to get used to that. Yeah, as far as the ARP, you also have up, down, um, accelerator, inkler, uh, in kind of in the inclination kind of thing. I'm not sure if I'm even saying that right. Random order. You can latch it. You got four octaves and then you have swing and then you can have it synced to an audio host if it's hooked up via USB, which is nice. The knobs are not endless and I know some people don't like endless knobs and if you so if you're not a fan of endless knobs and you like an absolute, then this will be right up your alley because it does have those endless knobs which is real real nice and handy one of the things i really like about this keyboard is the screen and the menu and so 
I do a lot of stuff on my iPad and I don't necessarily, if I need to change something, there's most keyboards do not have an editor for the iPad to change the settings on the controller. Of course, most apps do have MIDI Learn, but if you're ever in an instance where you're out, you know, and you don't have your computer or whatever, you can do all this with here. You just click a menu button and it shows up and you've got pad one, which is one of selected. And you can see as I change through, um, it changes the pad. It's maybe a little hard to see. I'm zoomed in. So you can see as I change, it will change the pad. And so on this screen, you can change what the pad is. And so you'll notice if I use this little scroll wheel, it just scrolls, but it's changing it from note. And this is just for this pad. Note, CC, end, CC toggle, CC momentary, and program change. Okay. In order to get to the bottom next ones over, then you click over here on the octave up and octave down buttons over here and it'll scroll through each of these menus up and down it doesn't uh, cycle so it's just up and down so if i wanted pad one to be a note and i needed to change the midi channel to something other than that you can see how quickly easily that is if i need to change the note name or note number curve soft heavy max and then after touch channel or key so each one of those are nice you can copy and paste pads if you get get one that you really like you can copy and paste it over and then one thing i really like is say you copied and paste so let's just hit uh copy pad paste pad so it copied and pasted it too so it's the same one and so now i can change that back to 37 but so I can copy and paste and then without having to like menu jump or whatever, I can just hit one, change it, hit one and change the note number if I want to do that, which that's really nice. And then, um, you know, it keeps it and you can save it. Um, you do have uh, some program selects. You got one that's kind of got some stuff built in for. Logic Pro, FL Studio, GarageBand, uh, Corona pa Major Pads. So I think it's got like uh, chromatic notes on the pads, um, Major Minor, Cubasis, Ableton Live, and then you have 12 user slots. And so quite a bit of programming that you can do, but you see how easy that was. And so if we go here to menu and I turn a knob, now you can see I'm editing the knob here and if i go up to cc it can change to ctc or after touch but you can do midi channel max and min values cc and if we go over here to um, after touch you've got those options and then if i want to do the key bed there's the key bed and then i can change the keyboard the transpose the octave and then the curve on each of those as well and so I really just, I really like being able to change settings on here if you need to on the fly, which makes it really handy, really easily for, at least for me, if, you know, if you're in a situation where you do use an iPad and you can't do that, you know, system edits, cause you know, I have a, an Arteria Media Lab MK2 and MK3. And if I'm out, you know, use my iPad as my, you know, main interface and all that stuff, and I need to change something, I, I couldn't. So that's a plus for this guy. Um, it's pretty easy to connect up to the uh, Bluetooth. And so, and it does have a sustain and a power button. Um, other than that, that's pretty much, that's pretty much it. Um, but the build quality, I mean, it is plastic, but it's also, you know, the price that it is like less than 80 bucks Let me get that back focused and uh and so you can't i really can't complain about the price let me kind of scoot this over here bring my ipad into focus here for a little bit and then i'll just show you 
it does connect up. So I'm just gonna press the button on the back. You can see it flashing. And over here in AUM, it's gonna be different in each app that you do, but Bluetooth Central, it's gonna show up and then you just connect. And then it is connected. And then all I have to do here is select it as the source. And then... We're playing around with the King of FM. Pretty, pretty cool little app. I will say you've got the little, you can see the velocity. The velocity is another thing that's, I guess, on the con list. It's def definitely not as responsive as the my Atoria uh, Mini Lab MK3, which I love it. I play it live, actually. I take it to church every week and actually you know, use it in conjunction with my guitar and stuff. But, you know, we got a few songs that I play, you know, 25 key, just pads and a couple chords and stuff. And it works great. You can do, you know, the controls and it's the velocity is nice and smooth. This one is not as good, but it's also 20, 30 bucks cheaper. It doesn't come with any software or anything like that. So that's, that's another kind of on some of these you know, offer brands and cheaper things. They don't have a software package that comes with. So that's, that's also, you can kind of factor that into the price. If you're just starting out and you get this, you're not going to get any other software. You're not going to get Ableton Live Lite or, you know, like Arturia uh, pushes out like their um, essential labs kind of thing. And you get a, you know, a nice little pocket of stuff that you can use, good sounds. This doesn't come with that. But if you know if you got an iPad, there's plenty of free apps, GarageBand, and things like that that you could hook up to and get a lot of those um, sounds on GarageBand. And it's not too bad. Or if you're not looking for that, um, as far as throwing a beat down, I mean it works great. So it works, and you got two different channels um, with the pads and the, and the keys, and they can be CC notes and stuff, as you'll see in one of my uh, videos I posted earlier this year. I actually used this, and it's the keyboard I was playing whenever I, you know, did some loopy, loopy stuff. But. And then if you hold down the ARP button, you can change the BPM here if you want me to speed it up. And then you just hit whatever. If you want to latch it. And you get all that feedback on the screen. You know, whether it's... Let me zoom back in. Move over. Move over iPad. There we go. So we hold 
the art bound. You get all the information if you're on octave two, three, four, whether latches on, the type of arping you're doing, and then um, get the swing value as well. So it's a lot of information on that little tiny screen. So I'm really happy that about the screen, the ability to change the settings on the fly, and I'm really happy that um, it's got just the standard encoders. You know, a couple of the cons, like I said, it doesn't have the most velocity sensitive. The keys, you know, leaving something to be desired if you're a purist, if you're playing, you know, you may not like it, but something you can throw in your gig bag. It, as far as the, you know, the profile, though, nothing sticks out really far. And so that's, that's really nice. You're not, you know, you throw it in your bag or something. These knobs aren't going to get, you know, crazy knocked around. It doesn't have anything protruding out. And actually, they're not real, they're not real, um, there we go. They're not real wiggly. Like I've have some other controllers and, you know, you look, you get on those knobs, especially just something that's, you know, at this price point and things are like, can be, you know, kind of the encoders can be kind of wobbly, but these, you know, these have a nice feel and I've, I've threw this in my bag several times and it doesn't feel like it's going to be, um, it's going to get broken and beat up and stuff. And especially since it is very low profile. So that's it on this right here. And so if you have any questions about it or want me to uh, demo anything else with it, it's definitely a fun little controller to, to have. I like the Bluetooth. If it had more batteries slots, you know, I may be more inclined to use it. I just don't like the three. I don't like the three batteries. It just that kind of irks me a little bit um, just because I don't have a single charger. The charger I have right here throws you know it does two at a time i had one that did single but it started smelling funky and so it was actually kind of burning up and i think it might have damaged one of my batteries so definitely not going to use that one and so i'm still in look so if you know any of that charges a single battery that i could use these three with then that would be fine if not you know having one little cable just for power a little battery pack or something like that you know that's not that's not real big of an issue um you know replacing batteries not that huge of an issue and i do if it is plugged in to the usb then it does bypass the batteries and so it does it doesn't use the batteries and so you can keep some in there and if you know if you're at your desk you can do this plug it into usb and if you're on the go or going to the couch or something then you could easily just unplug that the batteries will kind of take over and um, it'll use the batteries then so that's another good point other than that thanks for watching guys hopefully this you found this video at least useful it should give you an idea of what this keyboard is all about and if you want to spend your money on it i will leave a link in the description to this and anything else you want to check out and i will talk to you guys later